Okay, this is session two of World of Dungeons Into the Fire. A recap from last time. Let's get my mic closer to you. So, the party was ostensibly on its way to this keep in this borderland area. Um, near these mountains in the west, um, on the lands of King Lomar. Um, the idea was these knights had gone ranging into these mountains some time ago, and they went missing. And then one knight um, turned up, clutching a silver pendant in his hand. The silver pendant belonged to the, uh, the prince Prince Lomarin, who had been missing for 15 plus years. This uh, Prince Lomarin, the backstory there is he was um, he was setting sail to another country for his studies and his ship got intercepted by a pirate ship, um, uh, the pirate ship of Jalusa the Merciless. And that ship on its way to ransom Prince Lomarin went missing. And so it just, just vanished out of thin air. And so 15 years pass, no one expects that to ever turn up again. But then this silver pendant belonging to Prince Lomarin turns up um, clutched in the hands of this knight who went ranging in these mountains. This is an unusual circumstance because that ship should not have been able to get to the mountains in any way. There's no ocean nearby. Um, a reward is offered for any kind of information that people can bring back. The king's made this very clear, and you all have answered the call. But you all have individual reasons for going too, and that's the more interesting part. Right? We know, for example, that our revolutionary gnome, Moon Poison Wolf Crystal, from Bellet Osk, wants, she believes that there is something in the mountains that either grabbed that ship or transported that ship. And she thinks that whatever it is could be a weapon that could be used um, in the revolution to not only usurp the Hex King who's starting to have influence in some of the great cities near Belodosk, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong, Moon Poison, but I think you kind of have it out for just the aristocracy, aristocracy as a general matter, right? <laughs> just a, sort of like a general like people's uprising throughout the lands. Oh yeah. Uh, so that's a thing. Um, Jurek wants to bring this information back to King Lomar because he actually wants to cut a deal with King Lomar so that King Lomar's uh, people will will not abuse the lands in the way that they presently are. Um, Jurek and his people being, uh, being natives and locals of this area. And then... Um, artists... Artis actually has a connection to one of the missing knights, not the one that came back, the one of the missing ones. Um, this was a knight named Clovis uh, who, um, who taught artists archery, among other things. Um, Artis, remind me, what was the, was the, the relationship with Clovis negative or positive? I can't quite remember that. Or, yeah, it was positive, I think. Uh, yeah, I thought so. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were going to like, because he seems like a mentor of sorts. And so you're going to find out what happened. Um, so there's a personal connection there. And then uh, we got something to say about that in a minute. And then um, most intriguingly, I think, is Zalzane, our shamanesque character. Zalzane was, has heard rumors that there's a spirit called Yorobi somewhere in these mountains. And that Yorobi is a, a quote, reaper of dreams harvesting dream energy to do various magical tasks. Um, and so you all arrived at Fort Salem after having some little encounters and then traveling time, you arrive in Fort Salem and you discover in Fort Salem that the people in Fort Salem are not sleeping well. Um, they are a little distracted. Uh, they're not focused on their tasks. They look wan. Um, the, the sort of like chief of the uh, of the of the the, the fort, the captain Uriah, he was um, very distracted and exhausted looking, right? 
And we think it's because they're having trouble sleeping or there's something going on with their sleep. And this kind of connects up with the Urobi thing. And in fact, the very last thing we saw Zalzane doing was going to an apothecary who um, had a customer who was having some sort of like dream fit. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Artis, you did a little bit of uh, reconnoitering in the fort and you discovered that Clovis was actually the one who was insistent that those group of knights go into the mountains. And you and you also got the distinct impression from the person we're talking to that Clovis like uh, had almost like, like Clovis had like an evil glimmer in his eye. Like he was like there was something going on there, right? So that's a mystery. And then Jurek, you are waiting on your sister, um, who lives in Fort Salem. Uh, who uh, functions as a sort of like tracker and guide uh, for the soldiers. And you're waiting for her to come back from arranging. And in the doing, uh, while you're waiting, you had sensed a sort of powerful entity, uh, highly, highly localized in the chapel where we find Moon Poison, where she is talking to a lay clergyman named Kelvin, who uh, is seems like a stuttering, bumbling fool. He had just closed the door to tell moon poison something really um, really interesting or dangerous right so um that's kind of like where we left things a couple of other little details just to remind you guys Zalzane believes that bodies of a couple of sorcerers uh, are in the crypts of fort Salem and that these sorcerers may have some kind of connection to Yorobi, may even know how um so that's a thing and what else Artist knows a guard named Claude <laughs> who works in Fort Salem and they uh, don't get along. Um, also, you you actually learned a little bit of truth. Uh, the rumor was that this soldier, this knight, had that, like survived uh, and returned, that he returned to his own volition, but he did not. He was actually already dead and his body was delivered by a bunch of gold cap gnomes. So that was a lot of information. I, 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 just wanted to get it all out there. Um, so, Zalzane, when we left you, I know you were trying to help that person who was having the dream fit. Did you um, did you do a roll just then? Like, did we leave you on a cliffhanger roll? What happened? I did not make a roll. I don't believe um, okay. my intent was to. Um, sort of jump in and intercede, and I wanted to uh, perform some kind of ritual that would uh, maybe uh, allow me to interpret this man's dream and mm -hmm. see if it could give us any clues as to you know what lies ahead or what threats are in the area or stuff like that. I just remembered the die roll that took place. It was my die of fate roll, um, which I think was right. It was bad. Was bad. Yeah, it was one. So I'll follow up on that momentarily. Jurek, you are walking about the keep. You expect your sister back in about an hour, and you're sensing this like this force, this um, very powerful entity behind the chapel door. You don't know that Moon Poison's in there. I'm curious what you do though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder if you would like, if it's really powerful, I wonder if you would try to gather people or try to take it on himself, especially if he knows that everyone's like a lot weaker than him. I bet you he would get artists. <laughs> Maybe nobody else. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. Um, if artists, if you're okay being on scene, we could just say you're there. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So okay, sure, because like, there is a great power here. Watch yourself, Ranger. <laughs> and then I think he'll try to, to enter. Um, I could, Aris would suggest or, or offer to to scout. He's, he's stealthy. I'm not sure how stealthy Jurek feels, but. Um... Scout, like, uh, how would you do that? Because it's a church, right? Like, like just look through oh, a window right. or something? You have a stealthy skill though, so like if you do try to just sneak in, you can't fail that roll. So you can just oh. Right. oh. Do you want to try to just like I, I like that? You can maybe like kind of yeah. go around to a side window and listen in or something. Yeah. Yeah. Give yeah. me a dexterity roll. 
Uh, do we have the oh. All right, where are we going to be today? Enormously evolved crane. Oh my god. Cyberpunk crane. Okay. I guess I don't know how cyberpunk works. Sure. <laughs> no one really does. No one really does. It's true. What is cyberpunk even? Um all right. I don't know, but I know it I know it involves like um I know it involves lots of holographic images of 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 scantily clad Asian women. So um. <laughs> so so I got an eight on that roll. All right. That's a good it's a good roll. Hold that thought. I'm gonna let you you're gonna hear all of this, okay? But I'm going to um I'm gonna give you special information. Calvin closes the door, Moon Poison. And you'll recall Moon Poison that he was like a little like a little stuttery and nervous, and he, he was embarrassed because he thought he was like maybe staring at you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so he's acting a little funny. He closes the door and his demeanor changes entirely. I don't even remember what he was supposed to be telling you, what you asked him, but he's gonna tell you something in particular regardless. He says, if I tell you this gnome, you have to promise you won't say it to anyone else. Hmm. Well, uh, you know, uh, what, uh, what'll you give me beyond this information? Uh, I, I, I... I I am I am a humble artist uh, the, and and a minstrel at that. You can't just give me information and expect me not to say it to someone. That's, that goes against the code of the code of the buskers. Hmm. Well, I will tell you, nevertheless, because it is a secret that I fear I cannot keep anymore. That is what I figured. You want to tell me? Tell me. We'll we'll have no extraneous things put on top of it. There lives in the mountains, I have heard, a terrible dragon, a red dragon, one of the most ancient and powerful red dragons that ever took flight. And they say that he can take the form of a man and that he walks about these lands in the form of a man spying on King Lomar and all of his people, his soldiers, his captains. And they say that his plan is to eventually overthrow King Lomar and then wage war against all the neighboring kingdoms too. Isn't that absolutely frightening? That's fantastic. What does he look like? I have never seen a red dragon, so I could not say. Well, no, you haven't seen a red dragon, but you've seen a man that is a red dragon, correct? How else no, would you get this information? I've just heard rumors. I have heard other rumors, too. Oh. I have heard that he has discovered a terrible weapon that will allow him to wage his war without ever leaving the safety of his lair. How honest is this guy being? He's being a little like taunting almost, right? Right. Can you I give me a wisdom some... roll? Yeah. yeah. Read the fuck out of this guy. All right, that is an eight. Hmm. I'll let you ask a question, whatever you want. What does he want me to do with this information? Like, what is it, like, what is he, what is he trying to gain from giving me this information, I guess? 
It's an interesting yeah. question. I would tell you that he doesn't care what you do with the information. He wants to tell you because he, it's like when you're sitting on a really, really dangerous or lurid or fascinating secret and you just have to tell someone, right? And you're here. That's it. Yeah. And you hear all this as well, artists. And what's more, <laughs> what's more, um, you hear it, but you're kind of, I think, peeking through like a, a thin, like arrow slit of gla you know, glass window, you know, slit window that's kind of off to the side of the chapel a little bit. And you hear it, but you can't actually see who's speaking the words. It just looks like Moon Poison having a conversation with herself except you can also hear the, the words. And so, in the little apothecary shop, little herbalist shop, I guess, there's this man, he thinks that the, he thinks that this older woman, this apothecary, he's, he's acting like it's his mother, right? I think that's how we described it. I don't remember her name, but it's not super important. Um, but he- Her name is, was Carlissa. Carlissa, that's right. And he is, um, you know, he's like clutching her like, 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 like it's his mother, right? And he's, and he's terrified of something like he's looking, he's looking like towards the back of her little shop, right? He's just freaking out, right? Um, what do you do? Um, so I had, I remember from last time, he was talking about re uh, reaching out to something and asking if he should touch it. And she was like, she wasn't sure about, uh, you know, my involvement in the scene. And I was trying to kind of calm her down and let me kind of operate on this man. You know, yeah, he needs, yeah. he needs a real, he needs a real doctor. So <laughs> I think I, uh, thank God you're here. I think I, pull, <laughs> I think I pull my drum off of my back and I start uh, a, a little rhythm like a dun, 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 mm -hmm. as I kind of approach. And I'm just walking towards them slowly. And I say, um, now this this man needs careful attention. He needs he needs certain substances to be administered, and I need to interpret what he is seeing. What he is seeing could 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 give us vital information to the fate of this of this village. Regrettably, you may not have as much time as you hoped. Um, this mm. is mostly a function of our dire fate role. Right, he says. Mother, I cannot, I, oh my God, I see it so clearly now. No, 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 no. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? And you can see now that his, he's broken out in a terrible sweat, an unnatural sweat, as if he were standing next to a furnace. His skin has gone red. And he says, oh. Oh my God, it's getting closer. No, 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 no. It's going to, it's, it's going to consume me alive. The fire, oh my God. Oh, mother, the fire, don't let it touch me. Um, his body begins to smolder. Hmm. Is there, is there any kind of uh, like uh, water in the room, like a basin of, of cool water or something that I can just dump on him? Yeah, give me a, a defy danger uh, intelligence for quick thinking. Not defy danger, just roll plus intelligence for quick thinking. Yeah, sure. Um, you know what I meant. <laughs> the core move is just defy thing. danger. <laughs> All right, my intelligence is one. That is a seven. Uh, um, you're going to be able to put the smoldering out, but not before it gets a little worse. Okay, I mean, you'll, you'll save him though. That'll be fine. But like, basically, what's happening is like he begins to smolder and his skin begins to blister on his hands, on his arms, on his face, on his neck. And he begins to like scream in pain. And you can even see like, you can even see like the tips of his fingertips, like, like burning up as if they were being consumed by an invisible fire. And he's just screaming terribly. And you can hear guards like running down the way, like kind of responding to this screaming. Go ahead and save his life. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, 
yeah, I think I think I'm like running frantically around the room looking for something, and you know, I, I eventually find like yeah, a basin of cool water, and I just I run clumsily over over towards them and just dump it all over both of them and just soak Carlissa and this and this man, and you know the the a steam kind of pours off of him and the and the blisters start to like uh, soothe themselves a little bit, and then I I basically at this point I'm I'm not really worried about her protesting. I kind of shove her out of the way, and I have. In my pack, I have all these like poultices and ointments and stuff, and I take out this big jar of something and start spreading it all over his skin to kind of soothe the burning. But while I'm doing this, I want to, I don't know if I can, I don't know if there's a big risk here, but I would like to um, uh, somehow like jump into his mind and see if I can even just get a flash or a picture of what he's seeing or, you know, any any kind of discernible information. Mm. I'm into that. Um, give me a constitution I roll. Okay, cool. Um, not really a not really a summon or a spell, more of just like a kind of yeah, thinning of the veil that you're taking advantage of, right? This wouldn't be a decipher, would it? Possibly. We'll okay, because that's kind of how I like. I don't know. Um, it, it, I know decipher can be might more be about like runes or ancient texts and stuff, but I I'm kind of treating it as like a like deciphering, yeah. you know? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so I have that as a skill, but I don't, I still don't know what stat that is. Is that on the PDF? Oh, um, oh, I just said roll con. Uh, oh, roll decipher, con. Okay. Decipher is a skill just means you can't get a six. So. Oh, okay. Awesome. Cool. Uh, well, that is a nine plus one. That's a 10. Hold that thought. Artists, do you go back and tell Jerick what you heard or see? <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. You, you can have relayed all that, so you know it's like, together. Um, can we figure out what that is before we go in then? Like, uh, uh, it's about lower, but not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, like what like what might you know about like why would you be able to hear him but not see him and why isn't moon poison react? Yeah, that, I like that. Uh give me an intelligence roll. Let's see. You might just cool. All right. Orange dice coming. Four, eight, nine. Um, I'm gonna ask you how you know this, but this is a side effect of glamours. Uh sometimes when people have glamoured themselves to look different than what they really are. Uh, looking at them through glass or in or in the reflections of mirrors, things like that, sometimes messes with the illusion. Hmm. I kind of like the idea that it's like a traditional thing from the tribe that we always carry around, like this glass dome or like a, a mirror or whatever, just for things like this. Like even when people are giving uh, birth to children, we would put it in the room and make sure that there's no like evil spirits or demons or whatever right, taking yeah, place yeah. around it. Um, so I, a Jurek puts his hands on artists' shoulders and he's like, now is the time that we must act. We must save our compatriot and it is your time to have the glory as it was not back in the field. Because you flinched, remember? <laughs> that was not the type of flinch. <laughs> and then maybe Never gonna like, that down, artist. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to get it back, right? <laughs> what is best in life, artist? <laughs> um, and then he'll like kick open the doors and and like, you know, proceed to like perhaps attack this person if he could see them. Is that, it, it sounds like that's what's happening, Artis. So. <laughs> yep, yep. Artis is, yeah, he's going to have his, his bow drawn. And, uh, yeah, he's he's bursting in there. You Range smash, them. The moon poison jerk and Artis smash through the chapel door. Uh, Kelvin, like, kind of falls back, you know, and he's like, and he, he like, kind of falls back on his butt, like, surprised. And he's like, what's going on here? Excuse me, this is a holy place. Demon! <laughs> <laughs> what do you do, Jerek? Do you just yell demon? Yeah, demon? foul creature, don't, don't, uh, don't throw lies at us. We've seen you through the threshold. 
he says, I assure you, I don't know what you're speaking about, sir. I, 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 but I, I, this, 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 is, this is most untoward. This is most unusual. I, 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 I simply cannot allow you to, to burst in here like this. This is a, this is a sanctified place. Artists, you know the truth of the thing, act now. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does what does this guy look like? Like, what's his? Uh... He's, uh, he's in his early twenties, probably, maybe even a little younger. Um, kind of tow headed. He's wearing like a simple kind of light blue vestment. You know, he, he's just he's just a lay clergyman. You know, okay, right. Just. Blue <laughs> <laughs> poison. What do you do? How do you react? How do you feel about Jurek and artists uh, bursting in here? Um, I'm. I, I suppose what I'm going to do is um, uh, I'm going to jump down from the pulpit where I've been sitting, and uh, and then I'm just going to be like, "Wild men, what are you doing in here? What? Uh, can't you see I'm trying to have a civilized conversation with my uh, with this uh, thing over here?" Uh, uh, I think it's a human. Uh, can, can, what? What? What is? Why? Why are you doing this? Uh, we're we're just talking about dragons. That's all. <laughs> that is no human. Is it not? He says, "Sir, I I know that, like many people around here, you probably have not had good sleep. But you you are you are having a waking dream at best, sir. I am I am certainly human. I am flesh and blood." And he's like, "You know, doing this, uh, artist, legolasum." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, artist is gonna artist is gonna take a shot. Pew pew pew. <laughs> um, I'll be right back. Okay. Good. I'm gonna cut back to Zalzi and watch in. Jennifer does what she's doing. <sighs> Zalzi. The veil is thinned in that moment in which he is screaming in pain, and you are, you are, you basically snap him out of like a sort of uh, out of this like sort of waking dream, right? But in that moment, in that brief that brief moment of the thinning of the veil as he exits the sort of dream state and, and, and enters the conscious state, truly conscious state, you are able to, to enter his dream ever so briefly. Um, what does that feel like when you do that? Mm. <clears throat> I feel like it is like, it's like entering into like being dumped into like a pool of like lukewarm water, but, uh, but still being able to breathe normally and not, th there's no like temperature change or anything like that, but, but it's like being immersed in this, in this other state, in this other, in this other world. And, um, I think it, it feels it, it feels it feels like I'm like I'm bridging bridging a connection or bridging a gap. So like part of my consciousness is still uh, outside, but I you know part of it is here. So I don't have all my mental faculties. So it's kind of like this hazy, like almost like a drugged out state a little bit. So I feel a little like loopy kind of while I'm here. But yeah, in this momentary. This moment that you have, and maybe because of your role, give you more than a moment or two. But for this brief period of time, you have sort of like in his dream state, um, and like you described, does have this effect on your body, right? But you are able to see things. What sorts of information are you looking for? Well, um, I'm primarily looking for, like, I do. I do have my my you know thoughts towards our our quest right like i i have i have followed these people for a time and i have become wrapped up in you know in 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 the quest that they have undertaken um so i'm i'm looking for uh, uh, zalzane wants to be the one with the answers and he he likes being able to kind of um 
uh, interpret dreams like he he does that as kind of like a clairvoyant thing so if he can you know find information that he can use and pass on to the others as like advice um, he wants to be the mentor figure there um, also he's interested in you know the nature of these dreams you know uh, and how how they're you know connected to the great spirit that he seeks but uh, primarily because of, you know, this guy's talking about the fire and his skin is burning up. I want to see the source of that and maybe some way we can understand it. You find yourself in an inky black void. Possibly a large cave system. You can make that case, but imagine um like on stranger things imagine what 11 that like goes into her little you know like yeah sort of space like that blackness right? and you are standing about 30 or 40 paces away from an enormous pulsating roiling ball of fire like a miniature sun and it it just like it just like it's just like it's just like speaks at you breathe like well you get the impression you don't know it doesn't say anything but you get the impression that like oh it doesn't expect to see you who are you right but then you can also get the distinct sense that it wants you to reach out and touch it it wants you to step into the fire Right, And you can feel the heat as it swells, tendrils of flame worming out like, like, like mist, like little hands trying to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think like briefly I'm, I'm intoxicated and mm -hmm. I, I, like I, the, a song kind of enters my mind um, even if it's not there, like I feel this like, you know, like fiery kind of like rhythm um, inside and I'm just totally like locked in and I, I'm moving towards it, hands outstretched. And then I I have this flashback and kind of remember um, Moon Poison telling me about her vision. And, you know, I had encouraged her to like move towards the fire, right? It, that it was a beacon for her, right? That, that something, something about, uh, that that vision wanted her to go somewhere and that you know uh, often these dreams tell us things and are trying to help us and does this sun you know does this does this, this thing this feel like fire. it's helping me i'm gonna roll die fate we'll see yeah 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 a three you take a few steps forward and it is swelling and as it swells, you're getting hotter and hotter, and your skin is breaking out, like like getting a little feeling a little raw. You feel sweat pouring down your forehead, dribbling off your nose like droplets, right? And you get the distinct sense this thing is gonna blow. What do you do? Hmm. I don't, I don't think I can outrun it at this point. I think I call on my experience in this kind of dream world um, to, this is something that I've just begun to practice, like the art of dream craft, of like lucidity, of being, being able to manipulate the dream world to my own design. So, um, you know, f very uh, architect-esque, like from the veil, I'm trying to, uh, I try, I try to like throw up some kind of, uh, some kind of shield or something, mm. or, you know, um, I don't, you know, Zalzane doesn't even know if this is something he can do, but he knows that he can't just turn and run. So he's going to try and like push back against it and exert his will um, and consciousness over this call. place. Cool. We're gonna cut away. Let's get, let's get your roll. Yep. Table. Con, ooh, that's a 10. Nice. Okay, so uh, Jennifer, are you back? So, <laughs> artist is taking a shot at this guy. Yeah. Uh, so I think. 
when you see um, it go for the bow? I think what I'm going to do is, so he's taken a shot, has, has, he's drawing back the bow, and I have time to respond. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you see him go for the bow. I mean, it's quick, but you can, you know, you're, it's a heightened situation. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pull out my pistol and, and aim it at Artis. <laughs> I'm just like, so we have a what do you think you're standing? doing? I'm going to roll the die of fate real quick, because I feel like it's warranted right now. Oh jeez! Art, it's a, well. That's a, that's a good result, right? So you you. Oh, I didn't I didn't see the result. Oh yeah, it's a six. Um, so Artis, you go for your bow. You got your arrow. You knock. You're ready to go. And then like Moon Poison whips out her gun, and you guys just, just stare at each other down. Kelvin says, "Please, please. I, I I am but a mere layman, but I." I do know that we can't have fighting like this, not in this holy place. I, I, I must insist, and he kind of puts his hand on your on your bow and arrow, and he puts his hand on your gun. I must insist you put down your weapons, please, for the love of the gods. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, Artists, you're still trained on him. You can still let loose with your arrow if you wish. Artist is going to say, um, think, you know, this guy, he's not, he's not what he appears, you know, he's, he's playing us all moon poison. You just, you should put your weapon down and I think we need to find out what his true colors are. Um, and I think artist is going to attempt to shoot him he's still not entirely convinced that that what they're doing is the right thing and that it makes any sense at all but he's gonna take a shot and try to like more so to see how this man is going to react like not to try to kill him but to see like you know if he reacts as like a clergyman <laughs> if that makes sense is there a while he's doing this, uh, can I kind of scan the room to see if I feel this like presence coming from somewhere that isn't Kelvin? Um, it's definitely coming from Kelvin. Okay. You lose your arrow. Maybe you pretend like you're putting it down, right? But then you, you know, fire it off. Your arrow barely gets out of the, sh you know, the shaft barely gets out of the range of the bow when it just like, it just like, it, like a, like a, like a sparkler on the 4th of July, just like bursts into sparks and just burns up into, into ash before it even touches Kelvin and just crumbles into feathers and ash at his feet. And he says, that was not a very good idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do hope you enjoy your stay in Fort Salem, he says. He kind of pushes past you all. <laughs> find a way to occupy your nights. You might find, well, dreams here aren't so sweet. And then he says, now I must go and tend to my flock. And he just pushes his way past you and goes out to the keep. Does he change it all? Or? No. Okay. Um, so are we too like scared to act kind of so, thing? I know you can do whatever you want. It's, uh, it's surprising okay. and shocking, but... Yeah, yeah, I'm following him. You're following him, like at a distance, or like to where you he knows you're following. No, I'm him. just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, hey, man. <laughs> hey, such a pleasant thing to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. That's fine. Jerk and artist, you're there. Moon Poison just takes off. What do you do, Jerk? What do you do? Uh, do I know if I have any Hex King library things that would like bind this thing or creature or whatever, like a scroll or something? 
I don't know. Um, I mean, if you want to, you'd have to kind of go through your stuff and take a minute, but if you're wanting to do that, I mean, what do you have in your gear right now? Well, I have the Hex King library and then that from Bell at Osk, I have potions and scrolls unlimited in this roll one. Oh, right. Yeah. Just a bunch of potions and scrolls, right? You roll them. You, every, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it might take, it might take some research, but to kind of figure out precisely what might be good. I don't know. I mean, maybe you've looked at them in, like on your travels or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So you're looking for like some kind of like binding scrolls at the idea. Yeah. Got to trick up my sleeve. It. Okay. I'm into it. Um, you may have such a thing. Um, does it mean, well, can you use it though? I think, I think that's the open question. Like, I don't know. Can can fighters use scrolls even? I mean, if you, you're a fighter who has a bit of a, you have kind of a sort of a mystical frame, right? Like some of the things you mm -hmm. do. And if, and if uh, like the way that we frame the adventure, it seems like I've had years to look at these things too. That's true too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's say you have like a scroll of like binding. I think that's cool. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? I mean... I want to. Um, like he, so he's just like walking through the camp, basically. He's, like he's just walking out to the courtyard, and who knows where he's going? But Moon Poison's following him. Um. Well, yeah, I think. Like Jurek doesn't didn't hear what any of that other stuff was, so I think he just thinks he's a creature or a beast or whatever. So Demon I think he's just gonna yeah. bind it to like the closest thing, like the keep or the castle or the, the church or whatever. It's like you can't leave or whatever. Yeah. 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 Um, that's interesting. Um, Make the church his prison, ironically. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the intelligence roll. See if you can read the scroll properly. Okay. Plus one. Nope. Oh. Say guys. <laughs> oh, Poor jerk. Give me another d6 roll to see if you have any more scrolls after all these years. If you've, is this your last one? <laughs> Five. Okay, you're good there. <laughs> yeah, Artis, he pulls out this like scroll and begins reading it. And Artis, I think I'm going to take over the fiction for a brief moment. I think you're making a move. Like as he's reading the scroll, you're making a move to like go follow Moon Poison in the sky. You cannot break the threshold of the door. As best you try, you just like you just like like you just like can't like your body physically cannot walk through the threshold of the door. Okay. Um, uh, I think that's gonna make artists panic um, quite a bit, um, and he's gonna quickly look for another door, a window. Uh, There's just something. that arrow slit window. Yeah. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, he's going to start screaming at, at Jerk, you know, what have you done? Like, <laughs> don't you know how to read? Jerk, you also cannot break the threshold of the door. Okay. So it's like backfired on me kind of thing, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh... Meanwhile, moon poison. <laughs> <laughs> Kelvin says, he turns back and says, really, I have no more business with you, gnome. Oh, I, I, was, I was protecting you from that strange person. Uh, he's, yeah, I think he's, I think he's, he has too many marbles. Uh, so um, I just, I, I'm, I want to know more about this dragon because I, I feel like I want, I, I want to be its friend. And, and I, I just, and, 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 and you're, you're, you're the only one who, who speaks to me like a person. I, I just, uh, you know, uh, and, and if you could tell me he more about... Down. He leans down. He hunkers down and, and gets really close to you so that his face is like really, really close to yours. And he's looking directly in your eyes. And he says, red dragons are among the most evil beings in all of this creation. The only way you can be friends with a creature such as that 
is to demonstrate your own evil. Are you willing to do such a thing, gnome? And and she takes her owlbear skull out of her backpack and puts it on her head like a helmet and is just like, I look pretty evil in this, right? Do you think this will this will this will be good enough? He says You're going to have a very restless night tonight. Uh, well, the Hex King already haunts me in my dreams. How can that be? How can things be worse than that? Hmm. You're going to have very restless sleep. You're going to need something to occupy your time with, Gnome. Do you have any suggestions? I'm I open do. to suggestions. Commit three murders within the walls of this fort. And I have no doubt that Red Dragon will understand your character quite well. Are you the dragon? He stands up and says, no, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. I'm, I'm a lay clergyman. And he just keeps walking. <laughs> well, that makes sense. Zazane, whatever you do, you defend yourself from this fireball. Describe it. And you also snap out of the dream reverie. Right. Um, so I think that, you know, as the fire is kind of like rushing towards me, I I let out like a, it's sort of like a combination of like a martial arts yell, but it's also like a very piercing tone kind of thing, like a haunting, you know, whale sort of singing. And I, I, I just uh, throw my hands up and this big, a uh, shimmering purple wall just kind of like uh, rises up into the into the air in front of me and kind of like in, like encases the fireball until it's like an an orb just kind of like hovering around it containing the heat within it and uh, I don't know if I can see my surroundings any better or anything with the with the light of this of this fire but I think that you know I think as I yell and I I call forth this magic or this this effort, that's probably enough to kind of knock me out of out of the world. Yeah. And in fact, that pitch black darkness was not just an inky black void. You see stalagmites, stalactites, crenellations. It was a cave of some sort. Cool. And you snap out of it. Um, Carla says... And I'm, like, oh. I'm yelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carlos is like, oh my God, it was happening to you too. I can see it. And she's like, she's got like a towel and she's like drying off the sweat from your skin, right? And she says, she says, she says, I, I, and then like, I think a guard is like trying to like, you know, check in on you. He hears the screaming and stuff. And she says, go away, go away. It's fine. It's fine. And then she goes and slams the door. Mm. And she says, what? what did you see? We have to get to the bottom of this. Kind woman, herbalist, whatever your profession. Um, this town, this this region, this whole area, a, a curse lies over it, or the the presence of a of a great spirit, I believe, has 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 afflicted the minds of some of your townsfolk. They will continue to see visions such as this. More, more and more will succumb to its to its dark prophecy and prophecy I believe it to be this what this man saw what I saw I think it's real I think it's out there in the mountains I think it's it's coming the fire grows I don't know what we can do about it or at least what you can do about it other than treat these people as best as you can she says Yes, yes, there is something terrible going on here. I know it. I, I have seen these things as well. I have not slept. I have not slept in two days. In fact, I don't, I, I will do my best to, to tend to people, send them here, send them to me. I will, I will, I, 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 I can keep them awake. I can comfort them while they sleep. But 
<sighs> then she looks at this guy whose body is very badly burned. She says, I have no power against whatever, whatever terrible magic, whatever terrible darkness caused this. This magic must be stopped at the source, you understand. Me and my companions, we have we have work to do. We, we must venture out to the mountains. I do not know when we will leave, but until then, I need you to, like I said, treat these people, but listen to what they say. R write down everything you hear. I need all the information that I can about what I may face in those mountains. She says... Yes, yes. When, 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 when will you be heading out? Uh, I'm, first, I must... Uh, uh, it's been a little while since I've checked on my friends. I, I, I should be going. How, how long was I, was I under for? You, 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 you were in mere seconds. Uh, you screamed and you, and, you, and you broke out in sweat. In a sweat. Uh, well, good. Good. Hopefully, not enough time for them to get up to any shenanigans. I'll I'll be on my way, and I I just kind of jump up and I'm like, you know, frantically putting, you know, just getting gathering my things and and getting ready to leave. Jurek and artists, you cannot leave the chapel. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I think Jurek's like, well, fuck. <laughs> it's like, artists, this is why you just should never. Never cast spells, even me. <laughs> and I think he legit just starts laughing, and he's like, "It could be worse. We're stuck in a church, safe and sound." <laughs> I suppose it could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think he just like sits down and waits for it to end. And, like, <laughs> and just like punches <laughs> it. <laughs> Uh, let's take a quick break. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys your XP reward right now, though. <laughs> uh, uh, everyone can take 200. <laughs> and if you need to level up, you can level up as well. <laughs> we'll come back in two or three.
Matthew, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, Moon Poison, aka Jennifer. This is a uh, yeah, like I. Uh, this is really fun, and uh, you're definitely a a main contributor to like the lore, and I appreciate that. Thanks, Jen. No, I'm I I think your character is <laughs> super awesome, and I basically based a lot of my whole thing off of like all the awesome shit you came up with. So. I uh, think we could have some fun adventures together in the futures, including. I right sure now. hope so. <laughs> if y'all survive, I have to come find y'all. All right. And those two dumbasses are stuck in the church. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Kelvin. <laughs> Safe, also. Kelvin gives you the slip. And he's made it very clear what you'll need to do to get the Red Dragon's attention, Moon Poison. Commit three murder, commit three murders this night, so he understands. Well, so he's got the full measure of your character. Is there a meeting place of some sort, like a bar or alehouse mm -hmm. or like diner? Yeah, there's like a little, um, like a sort of like little two table like pub. That's where Artis was chit chatting and learned about Clovis. Okay. Um... So I'm going to go over there and see if I can find any, like, disgruntled guardsmen. <laughs> okay. Disgruntled, there are a lot of people who just look really exhausted, really tired, um, just really out of it. What is, is Claude, would Claude be dis disgruntled? Possibly, yeah. I and mean, Claude is... It seems like Claude does not like artists. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, who, do, who doesn't like artists, right? No, so so quick with a bow. Uh, my other question is just a just a quick clarifying question. Um, so, is there like a Castellan here at the keep of some sort, or like who's really in charge? It's Captain Uriah. This is this is okay. just a, an outpost. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's no like. Uh, lord or anything. Noble, yeah. like, lord or anything. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, I'm, yeah. So a lot of people are just kind of tired and, and. Yeah, very, 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 very exhausted looking. Uh, many of them, um, some of them are even like kind of muttering to themselves. Like they're a little like dazed and confused. Like, where am I at? What's going on? Talking into their drinks. Um, You've noticed that since you arrived, though, like this strange sort uh -huh. of like befuddled, exhausted behavior, right? You get the distinct impression people aren't sleeping well. Right, right. And so Claude's part of the guard, is that correct? He is. He's a, yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a soldier there at the, at the keep, at the fort, Fort Simon. Does he get along with Uriah? I don't know. Do you want to find him? Find out? I want to find him. And I want to challenge him to a game of cards. Artist, remind me. Um, wh wh why is why did Claude, why do you not like Claude? Why does he torment you? Uh, so back in my hometown, um, he was like a guard who was traveling through on rotation or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, just gave my my family a hard time. We were like hunters or whatever, and. Mm -hmm. You know, something about poaching or, or something like that. Like it. Awesome. I imagine Claude is one of these, like, um, so let's say you find Claude, like, uh, I think he's one of these people who kind of, yeah, like Gaston, exactly, right? Like, or something similar. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I think he's more like, no, I think he's actually more of like a sort of, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm imagining that guy in The Princess Bride, you know, um, indubitably or whatever, that guy, remember that guy? Um, oh, okay. I'm yeah. imagining like that, kind of a little slovenly, um, uh -huh. kind of balding, like... Um, uh, like kind Machiavellian. Of, kind, of, kind of holds forth, you know, like there's right. like, like he'll have a, a few of the younger guards around, and he's probably telling like inappropriate jokes and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. And you'll find him, and they're just like, and they're kind of laughing, you know, ha, 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 or whatever. And then they see you, because you're so strange looking, right? And 
he kind of like he kind of like does this like to the other guards like part the seas a little bit because he's sitting down on the on a bucket and he kind of like leans forward and he says you're a very very unusual looking person what are you oh i'm a minstrel just a mere minstrel from belladosk all i have Bellas, all I have? that explains it all. <laughs> I want to talk to you. If you're a about... minstrel, play a song for me. And then he like takes a sausage and he bites like half this sausage, and then he like throws you the other half of the sausage as a payment. And I like I I kind of I grab it and and then I kind of I chew on it and then I say <laughs> I'll play you a song. And um, so I get out my hurdy gurdy and I start to like just crank out the like danciest tune. And everybody like it, and like I'm sure there might be, there might be like a someone in the, in the crowd who might have like a pocket fiddle and i'm just like i'm just like up you get and just like right, and yeah. we start doing a dancing tune what i'm doing what i'm actually doing is um is i'm performing like sort of a ritual um a summoning ritual do you have um, an hour? <laughs> do i have an hour yeah, uh, is, yeah is, I, is this gonna go for an hour are you throwing a party right now in the middle of the i am throwing a party I am okay. like I am I am creating um a yeah I'm I'm throwing a party and I'm like and I toss uh toss some money to the barkeep and I uh I'm like I'm like drinks all around uh and like begin to create a mob out I of like this. It. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll let that go. Our it'll take a little bit. Meanwhile, uh, Zazen, where do you go? Let's see. Maybe you even hear this cacophony. Right? I was about to say, as soon as the hurdy gurdy is busted out, and I hear that twanging from across the village, my ears perk up, and I know that that's where Moon Poison might be. And at first, I'm I'm hurrying over to kind of like, you know, tell her about you know the prophetic you know vision I had and delving into this man's dream, and the fire beckons me and everything like that. But as soon as I walk in, and people are up on the tables and like. Uh, you know, drinks are getting poured. Like, I'm just like, like I, I walk in breathless and I'm looking around frantically and I just like see the celebration. And I'm just like, uh, screw it. And I just get my, I just get my drum out and I just join in. And uh, yeah, I think I, I take, take... <laughs> are, are you, yeah. Are you writing the coattails of, the, of yeah. her, of her du dueling rituals? Maybe not dueling, but you know. Um, yeah, I think there might be a few spirits being summoned right now. Meanwhile, back at the chapel, <laughs> everyone is gathered in the courtyard. There's all this stuff going on. You hear the hurdy gurdy. You see Zal saying, "Oh, hey, you can't leave," and um, and he's doing his drums. So, what flags do you guys have? <laughs> uh, yeah, what do you have? Convince me to scout out a dangerous situation. Done. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, show me that the world still needs me. Hmm, I don't know. You have an opportunity to hear a flag here, artist, if, you, if you're feeling compelled. Because you're still stuck and you can't leave. Uh -huh. Um... Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with those, so I will get a flag later, but. What about this problem? Well, oh, actually, there, there we go. Um, so, like, Jurek is, like, uh, seen many things. He's, like, an older, older fella. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I think Artis is, like, <laughs> increasingly going into like full bone panic mode and like you know every like five minutes he gets up and like takes another charge at the door and like <laughs> falls back <laughs> you just literally and, can't go you like just stop like you're just like, like you're like you just can't do it right 
right yeah yeah so yeah he's just like full-on freaking out hyper hyperventilating you know he's, he's a youngish <laughs> guy he's just like <laughs> Not the a... world needs you, old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I think he'll eventually put his hands on your shoulders just like before, but in like a staying hand. And he says that sometimes the world just needs you to slow down and stop even. We're, we just need to be patient. We will get out of here. We won't die in this church. I promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with my spellcasting abilities. <laughs> Could end at any moment. You <laughs> <laughs> Just take a moment to collect yourself and rest. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Tell me about a time. Maybe you'd say it in character. Tell us about a time when you had to exhibit patience under very, very dire circumstances. Much more dire than this. Hmm. Maybe uh, it was like near the end of a season and they had not gotten enough um, meat, like deer or whatever kind of meat, but they came upon uh, him and his dad came upon a like elk or something like that, a caribou, whatever. Um, and it, for all they knew, it was going to be the last one um, that they ever caught. So they had to be very cautious. And I think it took them like a whole a full extra day of just hunting this animal to make sure that it was the perfect shot because if they didn't land it then mouths wouldn't be fed and we wouldn't last the winter maybe um yeah so yeah. so sometimes you just got to be chill <laughs> moral of the story <laughs> parable of the elk <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so an hour passes. You've got your, your song going. I should mention, the entire time, Moon Poison, the entire time, Claude is there just looking absolutely surly. Everyone else is like really into it and dancing and, and a little delirious. It's actually probably maybe the most joyous thing that's happened in a while just because everyone's in such a strange state, you know, strange mood. And he's just sitting there like his arms crossed, of course, sitting there, arms crossed on his little stool, just like glowering the whole time, unimpressed. What will happen to uh, the spirit? So, yeah, um, how many guardsmen are there and how many non-guardsmen are there? Like, give me a it's probably It's probably a mix, I don't know, maybe a dozen of each, a couple dozen of each. Okay. and. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, so like as, as the, the party goes on, as the music goes on, like, like I kind of really light up and like I'm standing on top of a table or on top of the bar, just playing my music and something, I, I, I like an aura comes about me and then I just, I just stand like it's like I'm not taller than I usually am, but I seem much taller. Mm. And um, and I and I start to give. And um, okay. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, aren't you tired? Tired of of not getting enough sleep these days. What what has become of this place? We were. This is this is your home, and yet you cannot even enjoy your you you get restless nights. And what do the guardsmen do? Nothing, absolutely nothing. There's nothing that they do to help you to ease your pain. They just stand around, and and it's not like uh, they're useful for anything. Uh, when was the last time there was a raiding party? When was the last time anything bad happened here? But yet. They are incompetent and completely useless in the face of something that 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 is really sorely affecting you. Well, hmm. why should we why should we pander to them any longer? I say, I say, we 
we we tear them down and solve this problem ourselves. It's it's not. It's it, we can't we can't continue this way. And um, and so I'm just like I'm just riling up the crowd to try to turn against the the guardsmen. And then and what is this? What is the spirit? You, what's the spirit you've summoned? Well, well, so I'm so, I'm trying to summon the um, uh, Yozi Okono, the uh, revolutionary spirits of change, change and, and renewal. renewal. Yeah. And what, so, what I'd like what I'd like to do here is have Zal Zane kind of shamble up on stage with two champagne glasses filled with quicksilver and like you know raise a toast kind of thing and like cheers moon poison after her speech and then both of us down our our magic spirit summoning essence and then. Well, uh, she's maybe taking an hour, so should, you don't need the quicksilver, right? Yeah, the silver is not needed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, cool, cool. I, 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 I could use potentially aid if necess if needed. <laughs> like that's kind of it's it's nice that I have another summoner here that can aid me in the summoning. So, um, well, I, I, I wonder if like, uh, yeah, 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 definitely. Um, I think Zalzane might might be wanting to might be interested in in complimenting this speech and this this sentiment by summoning a spirit himself, the spirit of dreams to kind of, <laughs> um, uh, to kind of one, put everyone in kind of like a heightened state, like almost like, uh, you know, just, just so that they're more receptive to this idea. And also to maybe um, call upon her to, to, kind of soothe the um and protect the the town for a time at least for tonight from these dreams and get and give them like all these uh you know wonderful positive dreams and stuff like that um mm. after of course they kill the guards <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah. let's see how let's see how your spirit of revolution goes give me that intelligence role. yeah i'm going charisma with this one thank you very much yeah, fair all enough. that music and yeah, fair enough fair enough speeches all right well that is a 10 a 10 and what's the what's the precise effect you're going for so i am trying to rile up the townsfolk to kind of rebel and go up against these guards uh sort of having them do the dirty work for me but creating <laughs> chaos in this town <laughs> I'm sure three people will die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a, I think we know it's working when an old woman, she kind of, we don't know. She's just a, I mean, just a real mean, gnarled, twisted up, scrunch faced old, like battle ax. She's just like, she's just like, yeah, no one's doing anything. Captain, your eyes not doing anything. And she like she then she takes a big like she's got like a big um, she, I think she she's got like a big like a big jug like a big jug of something right. And she just like raises it and just like smashes it over a guard's head. Um, and and, and it, yeah, sorry, go ahead. And there's just like he just like falls down like you know bleeding um, and. Everyone is just like stone silent. Okay, and then and then uh, uh, instead of doing all my summoning bullshit, Zhao Zane just breaks the silence with this like war drum, and he just starts like dum 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 dum, and like <laughs> he's, he's to, like like incite like in this moment of silence, and then the pit just happens basically, and he's just trying to like make it a metal concert now. Yeah, yeah, and I think there's just a fight, basically just a fight between the villagers and the guards breaks out and. Uh, it's just chaos. Um, Jurek and artists, you see all this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we're in the church, I think. <laughs> At a certain point, um, you see Kelvin, like, you see Kelvin standing on the periphery of all this chaos, this fight. And I think some other guards are coming down trying to break it up. And there's it's just, no, it's just crazy. And you see Kelvin and he's like watching this whole thing take place. He's looking at moon poison and he's kind of like, you can see a smile spread across his face in the torchlight, right? It's pretty dark by now. And he turns and uh, he's going back to the chapel. <laughs> he's heading right back toward the chapel. He sees you both in there and says, 
what are you still doing in here? I thought I made it perfectly clear that you should leave. Well, see the thing about that. Jerry kind of like gives you the like ixnay on the fucking telling, eh? Let him come on in, <laughs> right? We think it's pretty great in here, so we're just hanging out. <laughs> <sighs> and he seems a little confused. He says, well, you do what you want. I have business. And he kind of goes toward, like, the back altar area. And there's, like, a small altar, like, a little, you know, thing. And he, like, begins pushing it aside. Like, oh, right? This heavy, pretty confident, hey? Grinding with <laughs> stone on stone. And he pushes it aside to reveal beneath the altar um, a set of stairs that are going down. And he says, are you going to come with me? Aren't what are you, you doing? <laughs> remotely curious about what's down here? What are you, what is your plan, demon? Speak plainly. <laughs> he says, <clears throat> do me a favor, push the altar back on top, on top of this. He says, I don't wish for anyone to follow me. And he begins going down the steps. <laughs> <laughs> Artists, we got this, right? We got this. Yeah, we'll just leave, we'll just leave a note on one of the pews and be like, "Demon downstairs, we're going to fuck it up." <laughs> Get found, come downstairs. I don't know. But yeah, I think we should go hurt him probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that we can hurt him, but but Artist definitely wants to. Well, this could just be like a facade, right? Like maybe he's actually like really easy to wound, but we just don't think so because he's so confident. <laughs> right. He did, well, cause a, he did cause a arrow to burst into. Well, that, that's a burn up uh, midair. It's a parlor <laughs> trick, really. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I think if if you know any of those two are in earshot, he'll jerk will shout like the the demon is back and going beneath the into the bowels of the church. We follow, and that he'll like charge down, <laughs> 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 somewhat like less confident than normal, but he'll do it. <laughs> yeah, artist artist is is following behind too. Um, arrow out. Uh, terrified but but marching on moon poison and zalzane you would have moon poison especially you would have noticed kelvin like on the periphery of the party watching all this chaos watching all this you know like this burst of bloodshed right uh, it eventually simmers down and they get control of it again but but what do you do i mean you see him go to the chapel you also probably see Jurek and Artis are still in the chapel for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, 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 I just, I just, I, I pull. They really love that <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, I pull Zelzane down to my level, um, and and I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just like, I just kind of yank him down so that he's kind of crouched over awkwardly, and I'm just like. Our religious friends uh, may need some assistance, and uh, we're going to go now because we succeeded in what we needed to do. Uh, so, um, well, I succeeded in what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, let's let's go and uh, and reunite with our party. I'm uh, I'm I'm all for the spirit of of revolution, but it's you're just going to leave. This is your right. <laughs> Yes, it's my riot, and I can leave when I want to. Uh, <laughs> well, all right, then. I, uh, let's leave. <laughs> and this, yeah, so I shoot. I drag him. I I gotta go real quick. So okay, sure. Cut away. <laughs> yeah. I'm 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 just still playing my drum on the way out, just kind of like watching the bloodshed behind me, just like <laughs> oh, oh my god, because <laughs> because I I kind of like. 
I, I trust Moon Poison in a lot of this stuff, or at least like because of our our history in Bell at Oz together. Like I was at, right. at least peripherally involved in her organization. So when she puts on a show, I'm like, all right, I'm on board. There must be a good reason for this. Like you know, vi viva la revolution. And then there's and certainly then, no crazy reasons for it. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then I think this one got a little more violent than they usually do. And Zalzane isn't easily off put, but he's just kind of like, okay, that was that was a lot. But uh, yeah. These stairs, just jerk and artist for the time being. These stairs go down um, into the crypts. The crypts beneath the Fort Silent. And these crypts are um, not huge. I mean, they're probably like maybe. Eh, they're kind of like a sort of grid. It's like a grid pattern of, of, of like walls with like bodies slotted in, right? You know, um, and pillars that support the structure. Um, it's quite dark. Except, I bear my torch. Well, it's dark except for you can see a faint orange glow, a nimbus of glowing fire kind of radiating from Kelvin's face, um, which illuminates the darkness as he bobs. You see it bobbing forward deep into the darkness of the crypt. Jerk, what do you do? Um, I think I tell artists that uh, you're you're stealthy and may not be detected, so I will be the distraction. You strike when the moment is right, and then he like charges at the guy. <laughs> <laughs> you charging him? Yeah, or uh, yeah, like I, I want to try to. Um, like how big are these crypts? It's just like a narrow passage for two people kind of thing. No, it's like, um, it's imagine like a sort of like, like a, uh, imagine like just passages that are like, that make like a grid. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, and like, cool. and basically there are just like squares, walls of, of like bodies slotted in. Right. Like, like imagine oh. like an Elder Scrolls thing, you know, like in a crypt, yeah. Elder Scrolls, something like that. Um, okay. Yeah. That kind of thing. At like an intersection, I mm -hmm. want to attack him, like maybe draw him with a bow shot and give the opportunity so that since he's at an intersection, artists could slip behind. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we'll die of fate just for the crypts for the time <laughs> being. Let's see what that looks like for us. It's a six. You're good. As far as all that must, goes. Must have been my plan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you call out to him? Do you like face him or anything? No, I think I'm like, I think that uh, I'm going to do the bow shot from darkness as well, but I will have assumed that he knows at least my presence is following him and going to be taking a shot. And it's, um, it's like a, like a faint, right? Where, where I'm, I want him to know, but still want it to look like, and you it's, want, and so what you want is for artists to backstab him, basically, or get behind. Essentially, him, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. So, artists, what will you do once you have an opening? Yeah, so artists will uh, sneak into position, um, and since the bow didn't work last time. He knew it was coming. Anyway, he's gonna try. He's gonna try his other weapon, which I think is a, a short sword. So he's gonna, you know, at the moment that he's distracted and like the 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 fighting breaks out, um, he's gonna he's gonna slink in quietly and try to try to stick him with the sword. Indeed, your arrow goes flying, jerk, cutting through the darkness, following that that orange nimbus of flame, right? And as it gets close to him, you see a sheen, a sheen of like energy that radiates out and just consumes your arrow completely in fire, just consumes it to ash. And he stops and he kind of like, he's facing away from you 
He kind of half looks over his shoulder and he says, you really don't get it, do you? <laughs> and he turns to face you and he says, I did not want to have to do this. But since we're in a place where it's just you and I, and he kind of like, you can see he's like kind of drawing up, right? Like like drawing up some kind of energy or some kind of strength. And like his mouth like stretches, like his mouth stretches like a cotton mouth. Like it just, it just goes wide, right? Like it goes wide, like, like, like a foot or two feet, like wide, just stretches out. And you can see the little, a little glowing orb of fire at the back of his throat. Um, like he's getting ready to breathe that shit on you. Artist, dragon. The <laughs> that's that's the the sweet spot in the Zelda boss. Get him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's going to yeah. He's gonna he's gonna run. He's gonna try to dive behind something or you know. I mean, you're behind him right now because he turned, and we're saying that you kind of got in position. If you want to backstab him, you can. You have that option. Oh, oh, he's breathing fire at at at. Uh, at, at, at yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought he turned around to me. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah if that's going on, he's gonna. Yeah, Artis yeah, gonna... fired the arrow. Yeah, yeah, he's right, turned. Right, right. Um, yeah, Artis is gonna gonna try to take that window and. Indeed. Um, hmm. Give me a dexterity. Okay. Stakes are you, you stab him um, or <laughs> he whips around <laughs> on you. So. <laughs> be gotcha. aggressive. Be, be aggressive. <laughs> I believe in you, artist. <laughs> Was that my four and six? Yeah, the two green ones, I think. What's your dexterity? Yeah. So one. So 11. Nice. That's it. Um, I'm going to take the fiction there because I know kind of how it will work. You just rush up like quickly and you just like jam your sword like into his back, I guess, or wherever you would jam it. Um, and he like, he kind of like whips back, like arches his back and his chest kind of arches out and his head whips back. And again, I'll remind you, it's like stretched out really wide. And he just like lets out this like terrible, like deep guttural, like, like bleating roar. And as he does so, he basically just like unleashes like a massive gout of flame, like out of his outstretched mouth. And it, Jurek, you see it. It's burning the fucking like support beams, like fucking. It's burning it like Swiss cheese, like just melting that shit. Right? It's intensely hot. Um, just being in proximity to it, just being so close to that, um, does a D10 damage on you, Artis. <laughs> You can go ahead and roll that. Dragon. He's a dragon. Yeah, we I know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> what was that? D10 damage. Did I take that damage as well? Yeah, uh, uh, you, uh, you artists are taking the damage. Jerk's okay because I... Jerk shot from a distance. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. I think. I think outside. Um, like I'm hobbling, trying to keep up with Moon Poison, and I'm just like, uh, I was worried you were about to summon forth that repulsive worm again, and then we just hear the roar coming from the church. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, just oh, terrible, God. loud, guttural roar. That wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> Four, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So, and got armor though. Does uh, that yeah, help? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can subtract your armor. Okay. Um, okay. He just like, he kind of like pulls himself off your sword and he kind of like, he kind of spins around. He kind of looks at you and he looks at you, artist, and he looks at you, jerk. And he's like, and, and his mouth is like outstretched, right? 
and he takes the bottom of his like lower jaw, which is kind of like hanging down by his chest, and he like pushes it up back into place. He's just like <sighs> pushes it back into place and says <sighs> this is not over and then there's just a blinding flash of smoke and flame and he's gone motherfucker nice <laughs> <laughs> you're like all smoldering and I grabbed your hand and picked you up and I said this this is far better than in the field. <laughs> <laughs> and now at this point, you can arrive. Um, Zazain, uh, you see the sort of like, you see the charred stone, you see the smoldering <laughs> artists. Uh, uh, something was burning so hot that some of the stone is still on fire, like it's on fire, um, creating like a sort of sickly red glow about the, about the catacombs. And I, 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 <laughs> who wants to go first? <laughs> Sounds like How did this happen? No. <laughs> you're both down there. <laughs> yeah, at least uh, when we enter the room, like I think, at least for Zalzane, because he just had this like horrifying dream of like a great ball of fire he's just kind of like caught for a second and just like staring around the room at like the molten dripping stone from the ceiling and i don't know if like you know uh moon poison's dream was more of just like a you know the burning boat so and probably not quite as fresh so she's probably the first to to react and i'm just kind of standing there stunned mm. and jerk like takes his bow puts it behind his back and looks at Moon poison pointedly, and he says, "Your friend is a dragon." <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I what? We have to kill it, though. Of course, you can't be friends with it. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> that dragon would be really useful in the in the revolution. <laughs> An excellent bargaining chip against your king. Mm. I don't think a dragon will be subservient to anything other than perhaps ah, No, a of course not, but an ally. Mm, I don't think dragons have friends. There is a concept of solidarity amongst those who believe in chaos. Is that to say, who wants to explain chaotic evil to moon poison? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I... I Take out a scroll of memes. And <laughs> um, There's a chart with all the yeah. different dragons and their alignments. Yeah, red dragon is like not so good. Lower, lower right uh, corner is where the red dragon yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, let's see what it was here for at least, and then we can see how to thwart it and perhaps convince the little one that it is no friend of anyone at all. Mm. Yeah, he definitely, artist, like, he definitely seemed like he was looking for something, right? He went down there on purpose. Yeah, yeah he was, and he was going with purpose, too, it seemed like. Like, he was going exactly where he wanted to go. So, yeah, let's check that out. And I, and I tell artists, I'm like, I'll buy you a drink tonight. Good. I think I'll need it. I and I'll buy I'll... you another. I'll buy you another if you lead the way into those crypts. <laughs> <laughs> we might be out. Of drinks? We had a party. <laughs> we, we did. Well, I'll I'll uh, I'll lead the way because Artis is a little fried. <laughs> so going deep into the catacombs, Zalzane, do you share the rumors that you heard with? Yeah, I think I think while we walk, I kind of like remember myself a little bit, and I. I, just to summarize, kind of, I I think the general tone is that you know um, uh, that you know more and more of the the folks in the in these village in this village are having these dreams, right? Like I spoke to Carlissa about you know what what's happening, and uh, I tell them a little bit about what I saw, and that you know the, the I saw the flame, you know. Um, hotter and stronger than I've ever seen it before, beckoning me closer kind of thing. Um, 
uh, and and say that, like I reached out to it, but uh, it was too hot for me alone to touch. And then I say, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm I'm being I'm being all vague and prophetic about all of this stuff, but I kind of convey the gist of the information. I think. Right. Well, you, and specifically, you 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 thought there were like some sorcerers down there or something, right? Like a oh, about the crypts, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, the crypts I, I think, right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I th I think like in the you know I I would have even told them some about that in in the past, like around the fires, like that would have been yeah. a story I might have told them. But maybe now I'm like trying to recall the details and I'm like rattling off the names of the sorcerers and like what their various specialties were and what great treasures there might be down here and what what uh you know minions or whatever might might come to life if we step into the wrong room or something i'm just yeah <laughs> dude, dude. I'm, I'm, it's, it's kind of paranoia at this point and i'm like you know no not there not there that's the sigil of the you know the whatever school of, of wizardry and i'm just like <laughs> right, yeah just so long oh, as there aren't any yeah. vile gold caps down here i'm gonna roll i'm probably gonna roll diaphate a couple times for this sequence but for the first one this is going to be just this sort of like um just the, the the basic safety of the catacombs, you know, minus the dragon now. Yeah. Um, so let's check that. And and Jarek has like his axe close to him and he's like, fucking wizards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did we die? <laughs> you know <what>? Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh no. <laughs> they're not wizards, they're sorcerers. These are no these are no book readers. All magic, all bad. <laughs> I'm a sticker. Um I want to give you guys some XP rewards. Uh, we're gonna take a break, but I'm gonna give you your XP reward. Um let me go to my notes, figure out what that's gonna be. All right. Okay. Um, Zazane and Moon Poison, you guys get 450. Nice. And Jurek and Artis, you guys get 575. And then we'll take a quick couple minute break and we'll do the grips.
All right. Uh, Jennifer, I assume you're there. Yep. Great. You are all stepping. What? <laughs> you're probably that too. Um, you are all stepping into. The darkness of the crypts moving in the general direction that Kelvin was moving. Kelvin the dragon. We now know your torch light, the ambient firelight of the rocks, the stone, the masonry that is on fire, all growing dimmer, not dimmer, just not really illuminating anything anymore. You are pushing into a blackness, an inky, blackness all you can see a mirror two feet in front of you you can't even feel the torchlight the heat of it anymore you can't even see your companions anymore and you're stepping forward And you hear a voice, a woman's voice. She says, can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice in the inky blackness all around you? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice in the inky blackness all around you? Circling around to the front of your face can you hear my voice in the inky blackness all around you, circling around to the front of your face, parting your lips, tickling your ears, slipping into your nostrils? Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice in the inky blackness around you, circling around to the front of your face, parting your lips, tickling your ears, slipping into your nostrils? Can you hear my voice in the dark recesses of your mind? telling you to go to sleep. Everyone roll a constitution. Nine for me. Seven. Looks like eight. Seven um, over here. Have a look at the results. That's good. Can you hear my voice? And you don't go to sleep. How do you respond to the voice? You're not going to sleep. Um, I think I. I call out and I say, uh, uh, foul creature, whatever you may be, you do not have control over my, over the, the workings of my mind, the dominion of my dreams. You cannot enchant me such. I have power here. And I, 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 I'm just like, you know, hands out, kind of like looking around, panicking, but, uh, and you feel, and you feel to, one of your companions. Who's the first companion you grab? Uh, it's, it's, and now they are. Yeah, it's artists. I kind of like I, I grab on, on onto his onto his arm um, and and just kind of like dig kind of dig my my nails into a, into your arm a little bit. Like they're pretty sharp, and you might actually break your skin a little bit. And artists, you're not going to sleep. How do you, how do you react? Artis uh, 
Ernest is going to draw out his, his sword and start kind of swinging it into the darkness um, and say, like, I faced worse things than you today. Like, And as you swing your sword, the darkness sort of peels away, revealing revealing wall, masoned, masoned wall, crypt, right? And who do you grab? Who's the first person you accidentally sideswipe with your sword? <laughs> <laughs> um, I hit uh, Moon Poison. Um, mm -hmm. not like hit her, but like bump into her with my arm as I'm like What's swinging around. How do you react? Well, I I have a memory of uh, when I was younger. My mother and I used to sing this song whenever I would go to bed, and uh, and so like that memory makes me feel pretty good. And so I just start playing my hurdy gurdy. Uh, along to the tune of, of Can You Hear My Voice? Um, a, a very common lullaby amongst dumpster gnomes in Belladosk. And Jurek, uh, hurdy gurdy right in your ear, <laughs> rattling, blasting, wailing. You're not going to sleep. How do you react? Um, I think I assume that that's why I'm not falling asleep. Like, I think it's some sort of enchantment and it's being drowned out by the, the noise. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Hold that thought. I've got an image for the image board. The image board. Okay, good. Uh -oh. <laughs> Is it Orshana? No, that's that. I was when I was preparing to summon one of my spirits. I would put the picture up preemptively, and then that didn't happen. But uh -oh. that's 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 what that is. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that. It hasn't been inserted yet. I'm inserting it right now. The darkness slips away. The song peels the darkness away. Artist's sword swinging <laughs> uh, peels the darkness away. Your torchlight gives off the normal amount of light you would expect. You have resisted some sort of some sort of spell, some sort of enchantment. And yet you may not be the better off for it. Oh. Uh. There are raid before you and circling around you several, six, seven skeletal creatures dressed in robes and uh, various adornments looking very very similar to what we see here on the image board they are circling you they're reaching out to you i'm going to roll the die of fate <laughs> yeah the result is a one <laughs> Which means they're our friends. <laughs> <laughs> they are there around you. They have cordoned you. And they're stretching out their hands, skeletal hands with wrappings dripping off. Those of you with magical inclinations, Salzane, Churik a little bit, Moon Poison. These are very powerful spellcasters. And they have made a circle around you and they've reached out a skeletal hand each. And you just like, I think like you just feel this, um, this sort of energy, right? Like this, there's this energy that starts to like radiate off their skeletal fingertips. Um, lassoing you, crisscrossing you between their fingers, um, going in you, going out of you. <sighs> I'm gonna go around the table and just find out what you're each doing. Zalzane. 
I'm calling on a spirit. Back with Quicksilver, I presume. Yeah. What about you, Moon Poison? I feel like the spirit of decay might come in handy here. <laughs> yeah, well, they're pretty decayed, but we'll see. <laughs> um, or maybe renewal, but um, yeah, I'm summoning uh, a spirit. What about you, uh, Artis? Um, Artis is gonna swing, swing his sword, try to try to lob off an arm or or something. Sure. Yeah. See what, what about happens. you, Trick? Yeah, I think he's going to try to use his axe to like cleave one and two or something. Mm, nice. I think you guys can be doing that, right? Like you, you know, you go in with with an axe, Jurek, and like, yeah, you just like smash into one, and it kind of falls back, right? And then I think you do the similar thing there, right, artists? Like you slash, and like a, I think like you snap into the bone, and the hand falls down, right? Um, pretty brittle, right? Um, that's all going on. And meanwhile, there's just this like swirl of like strange purplish energy, like kind of swirling around you all. You don't know what's going to happen here. Um, Zalzane, you're taking a hit of Quicksilver, you said? Yep. And what's some, what spirit are you trying to summon? I'm trying to summon Pustule okay. of flesh and bone. And what do you want it to do? So Pustule... Um, do do I need to roll for the ritual to to work, or does pustule does pustule come as long as I consume the quicksilver? Uh, you're still gonna make a roll. Um, I'm just kind of I'm, I'm mostly just trying to figure out like what the disposition here is in terms of like what stat you're gonna roll. Like I assume it's gonna be intelligence unless you do unless you call it in some other way. But um, I just wanted to, I do I do want to out of character. I want to what your effect that you're going for is there. So. Yeah. So I think um, pustule. I, pustule appears as kind of this like like misshapen fleshy balloon kind of mm -hmm. with like uh various bones kind of jutting out of it and it's kind of like oozing these like you know like pus and fluids and stuff it's this it's this horrifying um it's it's got like eyes kind of like uh of varying size and shape kind of stuck all around its body and what I wanted to do, because um, part of its one of its dominions is bone, basically. Um, what I'd like for it to do is, or what Zalzane is thinking for it to do is for it to kind of like get up in the air. Uh, it, it hovers, and for it to start like spinning around and sort of like pull these skeletons apart as best as it can, um, or you know make it difficult for them to to you know work whatever. Um, uh, What's what's the kind of magic called when you need to gesture? Um, somatic components. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if he can disrupt any sort of somatic element of their spell casting by messing with their skeletons. Okay, I'm into that. And moon poison. What do you what are you hoping yours will do? Well, so you know these are pretty decayed, desiccated corpse-like beasts, and so like the idea is that like. Um, while maybe while pustule is is kind of helping to uh, tear them apart, I'm gonna try and kind of like accelerate the decay mm -hmm. to to a point where you know their bodies become just useless. dust. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe so, you can maybe you can like weaken weaken the attachment of their bones too. So it's kind of like this combo move where like they're simultaneously falling apart and pustules like whirling around and it's this bone tornado or whatever. That's the idea. And right. probably won't and play then, out that way, but Yeah, there's let's, let's, like, see, how, let's, let's see how Zao Zane's role goes. Uh give me the intelligence role. That might determine like kind of what happens next. All right, here we go. Intelligence is one. That's a seven. Okay. Um, I think the way you've described it is going to work. I think you're only going to be able to knock out uh, two of the seven uh, 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 creatures. Uh, you can describe that for me, though, if you want. Cool, yeah. So maybe... Um, uh, is is, is in, uh, Moon Poison Spirit coming into effect here? Do we maybe want to roll both of these and kind of like see how they play out together or? Uh, I, th I think I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna limit your effects to these two of the seven for now. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, maybe maybe if if 
uh, you know, they, they, some of them do start decaying uh, if, if that effect does come into place. And maybe it's kind of like the oldest or frailest of the sorcerers. Maybe like they're missing some of their bones in the first place. And Pustule, um, you know, kind of uh, just sort of like pops into existence. And um, like I said, kind of dripping and squelching and making all these horrible noises and just starts to spin and uh, um, basically some of the skeletons kind of like hunker down or maybe you're able to kind of like get spells off in time or something to resist this effect. But two of them are kind of just like swept up in this, uh, in this, you know, in his rotating orbit basically. And their bones kind of like fly into this, fly into his body basically. And uh, he kind of like absorbs uh, two of the skeletons. Nice. Um, moon poison, go ahead and do yours. And then whatever's left, artist and jerk can deal with. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm summoning, and I'm like singing, I'm kind of singing this little song, you know, like, you are garbage and I am trash. In the end, we all go to ash. <laughs> Hit that quicksilver. <laughs> and uh, notes, that is a nine 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 uh same effect you can knock out two more that'll leave you that'll leave us with three left so describe okay. the two that you destroy um so what kind of what happens is like um you know the the the, the two like on another side they're they're kind of lunging toward uh maybe maybe they're lunging toward Artis and um, Jurek, and like all of a sudden, they kind of stop and start to shudder, and like, like spectral worms start to like burst from their bones, and their bones begin to crack and then crumble to the ground. Cool, nice, Jurek. You bury an axe in one of these things, um, and it, you know, it just it's there. You bury the axe in it. And um, I might give you a roll on this in a minute, but I just kind of like the fiction of you burying your axe in one of them. And it kind of like, it kind of like, it, it's, you know, it's, it's reaching out to you. It's got this like purple energy swirling around its hands. It's trying to like, or it's, it's kind of just reaching out to you, like kind of like in an embrace almost. And you see it's like sort of, you know, chipped tooth, cracked jaw, mouth, right? Covered in like moldering robes and a, and a dull crown on its head, kind of you know, again, like the picture. And it just says, it just says, it just says, beware, beware the hunter. And what do you do? Uh, I think I want to use the axe that's buried to like twist and try to like shatter the the body apart. Nice. Roll plus strength. Uh, plus three. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nice. Uh, it works as described. Um, you you do that you twist it you kind of like you know you shatter it and the head and like you know the sort of like the legs and the torso kind of you know all kind of collapses down and the head like drops at your feet um and the head like is staring back up at you with like dim sort of wear light in its eyes and and just the jaw like snapping and opening or, or opening and you know uh, snapping open and closed and it says it says Yorobi the hunter will have you. And then it's it's gone. I kick it into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um meanwhile, you have taken you've cleaved off the arm of one of them, artists, and this 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 same one, which appears to be a woman. Um, it speaks in that really like clear voice of the enchantment that was trying to put you to sleep, even though it looks like this terrible skeletal visage. Um, she says, she says, we did not know what we were doing. We did not know we were going to reach such a one as her. We did not know we could not control her. We gravely misunderstood what we were doing. And then it like reaches out with its other hand, glowing purple, and like tries to grab your face. What do you do? Uh, 
Ernest is gonna take his sword and try to like get her right in the face, you know, like maybe coming up from from below yeah, her okay. skull. Yeah, I like it. Uh, plus strength. Oh, uh, snake eyes. Snake eyes. She like slams her skeletal hand on your on your face, and like there's like this, this like streaks of purple energy like coursing all over your face, and she says. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice reaching deep into the darkness of your mind? Can you hear my voice telling you sleep? Meanwhile, there's one more. It appears to be receding into the darkness, jerk. Your two magic friends are busy doing their magic. And you can't quite tell what's going on with the artist. You, 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 you hear the, you hear the artist is mumbling at him. You just smashed one. You see the other one receding into the darkness. What do you do? Um, I cast magic missile now. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I just like the image of him being reckless. So I think I'd charge the, the creature in the darkness. I think that's what he would do. Nice, nice. Um, in an attempt to tackle it, or what? What should we try to do? Uh, same thing, I think, to like bury the axe oh, in the sure, head or yeah. something like that. Good roll strength. Roll. We roll. Snake eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you dive into the darkness um, with it, um, and I think you just disappear into the darkness. Does athletics help me here? <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I have athletics <laughs> and awareness and lore. Maybe I combine all three. <laughs> <laughs> Since you were running to catch it, I'm 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 open to this. We can make it a hard seven. Okay. Um, you you find yourself like falling, like you're falling, like. You're like falling, clutching this creature, like you're both falling. You're falling 10 feet, 20 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, just a sense of, of, of falling. And the thing is just muttering at you as you're like clutching it and it's clutching you and you've got your ax, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're riding down the Balrog, right? It's that kind of situation, yeah. falling and falling. And it just says, it just kind of like mutters at you. It says, you are a fool. We are the only thing keeping it in check. And you can feel yourself falling into the back of your own mind as if to fall asleep. What do you do? Um, I think... Uh, maybe the torch is falling with me, and I grab it and I press it to my skin. Mm, nice. Give me um, an intelligence roll. All right, you dice. Listen here. <laughs> uh, nine. That'll work. Uh, you take a point of damage, but it works, um, and you snap out of it, right? Um, and you just kind of find yourself in the middle of the melee with you know skeletal bodies flying everywhere. Artists, you're having a dream. I want to see what the quality of your dream is going to be by rolling the die of fate. Four, not bad. You're dreaming and Tell me about artists. Tell me about your your happiest memory as a child. I think the voice even says that. Show me your happiest memory. Yeah, it would have been uh, learning learning to hunt with his father. Um, going out and you know 
learning how to how to stalk animals and and stay stealthy um and then like you know the look of pride whenever whenever he like took down his his first his first deer or something pops pops into his mind like in his father's eyes pride in his yeah. father's eyes um we can have that scene for a moment i think your father is like you know you're, you're having this really great day right like maybe you even hit the deer right um and like you're feeling really proud right and he's like he's like I'm so, I'm so proud of you, son. You're, you're, you're a man now. I mean, in many ways, you are. You're, 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 you're. you're I'm just so proud of how you've grown up, and um, yeah, this is this is terrific. I don't want you to forget this moment. And. Uh... Yeah, he, uh, yeah, uh, artist, artist is like feeling really lucky to like, to like relive this moment, you know, he's like mm -hmm. savoring it, you know, like it's been so long yeah. since he's, since he's actually seen his father and it's just like, you know, it's good. Yeah, it's good. And he says, he says, artist, I have something really important to tell you. I want you to look across the way just over there, at that shrubbery, that copse of trees, tamarack stand, and you look, and he says, do you see that shape? And do you see now for the first time a sort of vague, billowy black shape? kind of like gets down and he says that is the most fearsome hunter of all this is the last peaceful sleep you will ever enjoy son I wish I wasn't the one who had to tell you that but if you ever sleep again And then you kind of, he looks up and he has just this like look of like terror as he looks at that like that black shadowy mass in the trees. She gets closer and closer and closer every time you close your eyes. And you just snap out of it and you are, you've got the, you've got the lynch or whatever, like, you know, you kind of like smash it or do whatever you do to, to disable it. And you're all sitting there in a pile of tatters and and bones um quite a bit of like old antique jewelry too um all just strewn and laying about at your feet role play i think i uh i'm i might be the first to kind of like uh break break out of my my stunned um silence i guess um our, our spirits like you know in in the midst of all the uh, all the combat kind of dissipated right it's just like the four of us yeah, in the yeah, quiet. They'll, yeah they'll do their business and go away yeah. yeah yeah and i um i think the first thing that i let out is i i say the hunter they they called her the hunter this is this, this is not what i this is not what i this is not what I had known. Uh, uh, my information is 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 wrong. It's invalidated. I, I. Well, what is she hunting? Uh, uh, there must be more information in these crypts. Come, we we have more we have more searching to do. A wizard was wrong, you say? <laughs> Strange that, but yes, I agree. We need to go deeper now that we are here. And I think I've, I, 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 I notice kind of maybe artist is like something is on his face or something is amiss or maybe, you know, whatever he, he just experienced something. And I kind of like, I slow down for a second from my panic and I kind of look at him and I say, 
artists. What, what, what did they do to you with that spell? Artists would uh would take a couple minutes to like before he can actually get anything out, and he would say like he I, I saw it like you know I saw I saw the smoke and it and it and it came towards me and 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 my father was there and he said that that I I won't get a restful sleep um and and I saw it the smoke and it it just. It was coming for me. Oh, God. That, that, that sorcerer, it must have been, must have been Noctara. She, she, she must have afflicted you somehow. There must be a connection with, with these, with her and the spirit. I, oh no. And I, I don't know, like I'm, uh, Zalzane is just going to continue to ramble at this point um, about all of his stuff, and this would be a good opportunity for someone to to nail that flag um, if someone does. Um, yeah, who needs one? I think Moon Poison still needs one. So, what's that flag again? Real my, quick. My second one there is dismiss my paranoid counsel as the ravings of a madman, or buy in hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> so it's either just totally jump on board with all the crazy stuff I'm spilling, or or call me out on it. Oh, well, I'm clearly going to go right in. I'm just going to be like, so, 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 Zelazane, what, what, what do we do uh, with this, uh, well, mm, was, was, did we do a, uh, did, was this a good thing that we did, uh, Zelazane, uh, because uh, you seem to think uh, it seems like otherwise. Hmm? Hmm? Well, uh, it was a good thing, I believe, to have come down here and, and dealt with these mad ancient uh, b bone things but i don't know if if bringing a friend down here and exposing him to that kind of magic was something that we necessarily should have done we should have taken more precautions against these things you see don't, uh how can we use them uh better uh these things uh that we killed do you think we can use them? Well, I don't know. For our good. I don't know about them. They are merely skeletons, uh, 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 sh shadows of what they used to be. But uh, there are traces of their of their of their might of of the powers that they had in life that they seem to not have in death. That should be uh, strewn about these crypts. We should continue searching and see if there's anything we can find that will deal with whatever art artist has been afflicted with. Uh, and I know that. That both you and and uh, and Jurek have been having uh, dreams. Yes, the Hex King. Yeah, he he lingers in your mind, does he not? Yeah. Yes. 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 He does. I believe there's something we could find down here that could uh, help us help us cleanse you of of whatever it is that afflicts you. You this this curse, this hex has been with you for so long and only ancient magics may purify these these things. Oh. It's it's what drives me. I, I can't let it go. I keep the skull and I point to the like the the um swan skull like braided into my hair so that I will those nightmares. Uh so that I always know what I am fighting. Hmm. I I, I understand. Um, Jurek, I, I suppose you do not have the same inclination about this curse. Mm. I have lived with my dreams for some time, and maybe we will find something deeper here, but I know that this, and he like spreads his hands to the, the desiccated bones and stuff, is probably not what the red dragon was looking for and he like takes his torch and fixes artist with a gaze and puts it in your hand and he says what you need now artist and it's the first time he's ever said your name instead of ranger is a task that's what helps me so light the way if you are willing 
is the skull of the woman who um, uh, cursed Artis somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Uh, was she wearing like a crown? Yep. yep. The I'm going to take her diadem. skull and crown. Yeah. yeah. Sure. And uh, maybe see if I can do something with it eventually. Okay. I think I drape myself in all the uh, all the jewelry I can find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys can collect that stuff if you want. It's um, that is how you get XP. So right. it's one of the main I guess ways. We'll take it then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's the thing. Um, there's not much more crypt. Uh, you had kind of reached like this sort of like deep, deep sanctum or inner part of it or the far part of it um you do see like seven alcoves now that you've had time to take stock and kind of look around with your torchlight there are seven seven alcoves the one that you chased down jerk was kind of like receding into one of these little alcoves right um it looks like they used to just maybe lay in state or by or stand in state or stand in rest in these like seven alcoves around this sort of semi this sort of semicircular room and um there are uh you now will see that there are like strewn all about uh there are a number of like books and scrolls and things um you'll also see behind you that in your sort of like weird dreamy fugue state where the where the lady sorcerer was trying to enchant you 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 kind of managed to work your way down a very narrow passage and end up in this room right um yeah so you can start going through these books and papers if you wish and kind of seeing what you can find um whoever if you guys would just take the time to do that i don't need any rolls or anything especially if one of you guys has decipher um Mm -hmm. Yeah. But otherwise, you're you're, you're kind of good here. Yeah. Okay. I, I do have decipher, so I think maybe I'm kind of leading it. But I think everybody's like running around and like you know, uh, re reading off like old uh, inscriptions on on walls and you know, sure. flipping through pages and books and stuff. Yeah. You're going to learn the fast forward to the the the, the, the gist of it here. You're going to learn that this cabal of sorcerers used to call themselves, they used to call themselves um, the, the the sect of dreamers or the order of dreamers. It's a little unclear the, the language it's used. Their whole thing was exploring the world of dreams, exploring certain parts of the ethereal plane, exploring the dream realm, the astral realm. They were particularly interested in contacting um, creatures from the dream world, from the dream realm, beings, creatures, entities that they hoped to, to commune with, that they hoped to achieve some sort of, some sort of um, uh, like connection with to maybe, and, and maybe even like, you know, use the power of these creatures for their own ends. Um, there was some just, you get from the notes you read, you can tell there's some debate about that, like whether this is a, a power seeking exercise or if it's an exercise to to expand man's consciousness right to the dream world. Uh, they fucked up when they reached a particularly nasty dream creature called Yorobi, a dream hunter um, that basically when you fall asleep, it kills you in your dream, a la Freddy Krueger, and you die in real life. Um, and the most upsetting part of your research is they basically, um, they figured out how to keep it trapped, how to keep it contained in the mountains to the west. And they realized that only their magic could do it. And they feared what would happen once they were gone from the world. 
And so they took steps to extend their life, to become undead, to become liches, to maintain this magic to keep Yorobi suppressed. He just destroyed all of them. Hmm. Well, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, um, I mean, that definitely dawns on Zalzane at some point. Um, I think what uh, I, he, I'd like to, if I could, take basically like, um, uh, you know, sorceress knowledge uh, gear or whatever times however much. Sure, yeah. Um, you can, you can, you can, you can call it uh, like um, dream cabal journals or something. Right? Yeah. Um, and basically what he's doing is like, you know, realizing that they may have just severed the link to, you know, uh, a great source of, of knowledge that he would have loved to have, you know, understood better. But um, uh, recognizing that they kind of did what they had had to do. But um, yeah, and I think like recognizing the threats that they poss that we possibly face uh, if we venture into the mountains, he wants to be as prepared as possible and, you know, use what the, what he can of salvage, what he can of the sorcerers, you know, spells and stuff. Yeah. To, yeah. You can, you can just put like, um, uh, dream cabal writings, uh, three uses. Yeah. Cool. I guess you'll three. just have to bind it to yourself now, Zelzane. Take one for the team. <laughs> and I'm going to, take any books that have anything to do with uh, necromancy and lichdom oh yeah that's good yeah you can you can get uh you can get like a um uh you can find a particularly choice tome on lichdom sure just write it straight up as gear like in your just a single okay. piece. um gotcha. I, I i i think at one point I, we don't have to do a whole scene about this but i think i would uh i would like lean over to to moon poison and i say um um you know the the dragon might not have been a a realistic uh ally or you know a resource that we could use in this fight but this this spirit might be a little more open to to bargaining uh if if you're willing to pay a hefty price i like i like <laughs> fraser in the chat with just the like the wait what face <laughs> <laughs> and I, I i try i try to whisper this so that others don't hear it, but <laughs> I'm, I'm planting the seed in moon poison's mind yes Indeed. yes i see what you mean we could really make a major blow against the hex king with this kind of power mm. give him the nightmares <laughs> <laughs> I assume you'll all leave the crypts at some point. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, it's 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 nighttime at this point. Um, Jurek, your sister Uma, you will you you will you will be aware that she's back at the fort. Um, do you go find her? Yeah, I think it'll be my first priority. She looks exhausted, um, like many people do. Uh, she's older, right? I mean, assume she's your sister. She's probably a little older, right? In terms yeah. Of, like her overall age, um, gray hair at least. She sees you and she says, "She says, brother, what are you doing here?" She goes, embraces you. Um, I have come to strike. A bargain with the king. There's a. We were tasked to do something, and in return, I've been told that maybe we are able to make these people around us hunt responsibly and not kill off the the way our of life that our tribe subscribes to. Hunt. Hunt. Did you say hunt? Mm. She kind of like pushes back from you a little bit. She says. No, 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 this is not the hunt. No, 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 no. I am not in a dream. I have taken all the precautions. This is not a dream. 
and she kind of like, she looks at you kind of like suspiciously and she says, she looks around and she sees the, she sees the chaos of Moon Poison, Zalzane's party and the detritus and what uh, left over. Mm. She hears the moaning in the distance of people having troubled sleep uh, and their waking dreams and the sort of smell of smoke coming up from beneath the, the keep. And she says, no, 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 no. I am, I have just arrived back at Fort Salem. I have just finished arranging. I received word that my brother was here. This cannot be. I am here. The hunter's trick. The hunter's trick. And she kind of takes a step back and she says, you will not take me this night, Hunter. You will not take me. And she kind of just goes for her knife and pulls it out and bears it at you. Uh, I think. And I, th I think that's where we end the session. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Snap, crack, and fall. Oh, what? <laughs> All right. Great. Um, I don't have time to, uh, I'm not going to debrief tonight. We'll debrief next week, but um, uh, but this was lovely. Let me give you guys your experience points for the session. Um, it is uh, a decent little amount. Messed up those sorcerers. <laughs> um, first of all, let's check to make sure that you, yeah. let's see if you um, got any, uh, you all hit flags, right? I remember you all hitting flags, so. I think um, so just take let's look let's pull up the uh let's pull up the world of dungeons rules real fast to figure out the differences i did this wrong last time so i'm gonna try to do it right this time okay so what's your what's your current level right now jerk um five five okay cool and so to get to of course, the PDF doesn't want to load right now. <laughs> there we go. I need fifteen. You need fifteen. So to go, so you're going from ten thousand to fifteen thousand. So five thousand difference. Ten percent of that is five hundred. So you get five hundred XP for hitting a flag, and then everybody gets um, an award of fifteen fifty group XP. So you're getting basically two thousand fifty. Um, we get two thousand fifty, sorry. Uh, no, uh, Jurek's getting two thousand fifty. Um, okay, and we the rest of us get fifteen fifty. You yeah, you each get a base of fifteen fifty plus ten percent of whatever you need to hit the next level. So for me, that would okay. be like four hundred, right? Yeah. Because you're going you're going from what level to what level? From from uh, three to no wait, I'm going from three uh, from four to five, which. Okay, so Would you'd be 400. 400. So yeah, so yeah. you get 1550 plus 400, so 1950. 1950. So I get an extra 1500 from what we just did in the beginning there with the 500, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yours is 500 plus the, the group XP of 1550. So. Okay. Cool. And uh, I think the two, you guys are at level two right now, right? Yes. Yeah. So okay. that means you're each getting 1750. Awesome. Right. So, sorry. How? I'm just curious. How is that calculated? It's uh, going from ten, one thousand to three thousand. That's a two thousand oh, difference. Okay. It's ten percent of that plus fifteen fifty. Right. I was thinking of the maximum. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Um, I leveled. So, do we do we want to talk kind of uh, writers' room style about direction for the next section? Do you uh, want to go off uh, live? We will at the top of the next session. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out what we're going to do. We'll have a little like how we want to end things um, discussion at the at the beginning of next session. Um, Sounds good. Uh, but otherwise, uh, that was a good session. It was really uh, ooh, all kinds of stuff <laughs> going on. Um, lots yeah. of. Lots of business, lots of dangerous things, lots of scary things, lots of 
Uh, we're not doing the module at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> the module is no. completely out the window. Um, <laughs> elements of the module are still here, but it's we're certainly not doing the module as written. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I was. We we were in the crypt, and I was thinking like, like, what's something I could like look for here that could like help us on our quest? And I was like. Wait a second. What is our quest? <laughs> right, yeah, the quest just became completely incidental. It's some it prince dude. It was ostensibly about finding out what happened to some knights <laughs> that went missing in the mountains. That's um, what happens when you get characters who have ambitions. <laughs> right. Uh, it, well, and that's the artist's artist's knight Clovis is still out there, right? So that is still a thing. But um, you know, as far as like wanting to go out into the wilderness and into the mountains but i mean the mountains are, are still a place that we are all somewhat interested in so if artist wants to kind of rouse us to his cause we can we all have our own reasons for wanting to go there so i think yeah, and you actually have no more reason to be at the fort too so like <laughs> because yeah. the fort is in ruins <laughs> right, yeah, well, well, well like the, well, well really well that's part of it but also because just like you know you know what's going on now you have the story right as far as like a lot of that stuff goes and the, the crypts were kind of the only thing to do in fort asylum so mm -hmm. um, like it's it's uh you gotta make some decisions do you guys want to face down this dragon who just so it's perfectly clear because he kind of hinted at it in kelvin form he's weaponized your Roby, right um that's the that's what he's hoping to do anyway and um, he's a dragon. <laughs> and he's a dragon. <laughs> right. yeah. Chaotic so evil, bad. Jason. <laughs> he's a chaotic evil dragon. Um, so, I, yeah, what I'm hoping happens, what I'm hoping happens session is you guys are going to have to sleep, right? Like, you can't trek into the mountains without sleeping at some point. And um, that's not just going to affect artists. Like, what right. the liches were trying to do by putting you to sleep, the liches were trying to show you what they're trying to control and maintain, right? They were trying to show you the hunter. They're trying to show you what's going on. But you guys just killed them. So well, they didn't go about it in a very cooperative way. So. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I have I have that lady's crown and her skull, so it's maybe true. we can maybe you can commune with her, right? It's yeah. True. yeah, we went into aggressive negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> negotiations. It was frankly, I just want to say, I think it was just like the racism of the living, personally, because you just immediately thought they were evil because they were yeah. skeletal okay. liches surrounding you. So <laughs> that's pretty legit, I think. <laughs> that was a really scary picture, though. Jason. So, you know, just yeah, you know. plus, like, you know, everyone saw Lord of the Rings, and those guys kind of look like the Nazgul. Nazgul. Well, the Nazgul's yeah. religious, right? So, you know, so there you go. basically, <laughs> same deal. And you said high fantasy. I said Lord of the Rings. He said yes. He's <laughs> a <It's> bad school. <laughs> the evil dragon guy was going down there. What kind of business did he have with, you know, he's going to good... destroy them? <laughs> what? <laughs> and this was a good day for Calvin. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like people died. He's still got the thing he wanted. Well, still maybe Calvin and I can still hook up. So <laughs> Yeah. Um. Awesome. I put a I put a picture of Pustule in the image board just for everyone <laughs> nice. to go out on. Just check, <laughs> let that let that exist in your mind. <laughs> Ew, that's nasty. I love it. <laughs> All right, awesome. That was super fun. I'll see you guys for the finale next week. Yep. Okay.